welcome to EGM 702, Week 4, Part 2, Visual Analysis and Binary Detection. So when we have two different satellite images representing two different points in time, such as this image from 1979 and this image from 1980, which showed the changes as a result of the eruption of Mount St. Helens in May of 1980, we can see a number of different changes just by visually looking at these two images. For example, we see the obvious change of the initial blast of the eruption, where we have widespread uh, removal of vegetation and forest cover. We also see changes as a result of the various lahars that flowed down the different river valleys around the mountain, the changes to the mountain itself, to the lakes around, and you might even be able to pick out some changes as a result of ash cover, at least in the initial um, months after the, uh, after the eruption. But there are also a number of subtle changes, especially as we start to look over longer periods of time. So visual interpretation is often used to select the best change detection technique to actually quantify or study changes. We don't, often, we don't always use this technique uh, to actually do the change detection itself because we're usually not looking at such obvious differences as we see here. Uh, but when we do have some obvious differences, we can use visual interpretation to help do the analysis. When we're doing this, we're going to keep in mind the different elements of visual interpretation. For example, changes in tone or hue. Uh, you can see, for example, the change from the vegetation colored red in the 1979 image to the more gray, tannish color uh, of the volcanic material in the 1980 image. But we also see differences in things like texture or pattern, the shape of different things, the size of objects, what they're associated with, or even shadows. All of these different elements of visual interpretation that you hopefully remember from EGM 713. So one, one technique of visual interpretation or visual analysis that we might be using is something called dynamic visualization. Now this refers, refers to somehow viewing the two images dynamically. This could be using the swiping or flickering uh, options in our GIS software. This could also be just looking at the two images side by side or using an animation like what you see here. So this shows, these, um, this shows a landslide that happened on 16th of February 2014, uh, which happened on Mount La Perouse in Alaska. And you can see the before image where we have the glacier surface, mostly free of debris, and the after image where we see a very large landslide that has come down off the mountain. This works very well for large changes, so very obvious changes. Uh, like I said in the previous slide, we don't always use this sort of technique when we're, when we're dealing with more subtle changes. Another type of visual analysis could be to form multi-temporal multi false color composites. With this, we composite bands from multiple dates. We can also use uh, differences or spectral indices calculated from different dates. Um, and we're doing this to help us visualize the changes. So when we put these together, we should see that areas with no change should be shades of gray, black, or white, while changes are going to appear in color, and the colors that we see are going to depend on how we've composited the images. So in this example, I've taken an image from March 2nd and set that to the red channel of the image, while the green and blue channels are an image from 7th of February. In this case, red pixels correspond to shortening shadows. We're getting later in the year, and so the shadow cast by the mountain is getting shorter, and as a result, the area that used to be in shadow appears much brighter in the March image than it did in the February image. Um, it, we also have blue areas. This mostly corresponds to the landslide. This is where our March image is significantly darker than the February image. You also see that there are a number of places up in the 
up on the peaks where we have some apparent changes. This is more related to the geometric uh, errors in the image that you might have noticed uh, when we were looking at the dynamic visualization. We also see uh, some areas of glacier motion down here uh, where the glacier has actually moved and we see a change in the position of crevasses on the surface. And again, areas that are white or gray should correspond for the most part to areas of no change. Much like with single image analysis, we can use band maths to enhance the differences between our two images. On the top here, I have a band ratio where I've divided the February 7th image by the March 2nd image. Pixel values close to 1 correspond to pixels that are about the same in each image. Pixel values above 1 correspond to areas where the March 2nd image is darker than the February image. And pixel values below 1 correspond to areas where the March 2nd image is brighter than the February image. You can see the rock avalanche highlighted very clearly here. Underneath this, I have a normalized difference index where I've taken the March 2nd image minus the February 7th image and divided by the sum of the two. This kind of analysis is very useful for something called binary change classification or where we're trying to identify areas where there has been no change in the image and compare that to areas where we definitely are seeing change. Usually to do this we pick a threshold value or multiple threshold values in order to classify or in order to distinguish between change and no change pixels. We can also use arithmetic images as an input. For example, we could look at a difference of differences uh, or a ratio of differences uh, in order to try to enhance the, the changes even more. When we're choosing a threshold, one thing to keep in mind is that the distribution of our differences or of our ratios is normally, or I should say usually, approximately normal. That is, it follows a normal distribution, or fairly close. And we might also need to enhance or adjust the image uh, in order to help make sure that this is the case. For example, we could use histogram matching to make sure that the brightness levels are approximately the same. So when we're looking at the distribution of differences or the distribution of band ratios, uh, the change pixels, that is the pixels where there's actually a difference between the two images, are going to end up in the tail of the distribution. And we can select the threshold or we can determine where those tails begin in a number of different ways. We could, for example, think of this statistically using the, st the standard deviation around the mean. Uh, so if we choose a um, if we choose a threshold of plus or minus one standard deviation, for example, uh, we might see a threshold that comes about here in our distribution. Two standard deviations is going to be a bit further away, and so on. We can also choose these symmetrically so that they're located in the same place on either side of our mean difference or our mean band ratio. Or we can choose them asymmetrically where we have uh, different thresholds depending on whether it falls above or below the mean. So to sum all of this up, visual interpretation can be used to help us choose a change detection method. That is, that it might help us see some of the more obvious changes that help point us in the direction of which detection method can help us to pick out some of the less obvious changes. We can also use this to help interpret or quantify changes directly, especially, this is especially true when we have very obvious differences between our images. If we're using band maths, these are also useful for change detection, um, much as they are useful for helping us to identify objects in a single image. And something called binary change detection is where we're actually picking a threshold in order to classify an image into change and no change pixels. I have a few additional resources for this uh, lesson. I've got you can read more about this in Melissa and Kiefer and Chipman, Chapter 7, 
or especially in Jensen chapter 12. Uh, there's two papers here, one from Sater and Winne, and one from Wilson and Sater in 1992 and 2002, uh, that look at using the uh, multi-temporal false color composites in order to do change analysis, and a paper from Im et al. that looks at actually picking thresholds um, for analyzing binary changes, so where we have change or no change. That's it for this lesson. I hope you found it interesting, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to post them in the discussion forum on Blackboard. Thanks. Bye.